The top stories tonight and why news. The investigation into the C-130 crash that killed 47 military personnel and three civilians is underway as authorities continue to identify the bodies of the victims. The Department of Health allocates more COVID-19 vaccines to residents affected by Ta'al Volcano's ongoing activities. The Sandigan Bayan has cleared Senator Bong Revilla Jr. of graft in relation to the pork barrel scam. Senators believe Senator Manny Pacquiao should provide solid evidence on corruption allegations against various government agencies. Rescue teams are battling heavy rains to pull out survivors following a landslide that struck the Japanese coastal city of Atami. And the Manila city government awards more than 200 housing units to fire victims. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, July 5, 2021. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the country and in other parts of the world. I am Harleen Delgado. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UNTV News and Rescue social media accounts and our website, untvweb.com. I am William Theo. And uh, Mr. Angelo Castro III will be joining us later in the program. First in the news, the worst military air disaster in the country happened after a Philippine Air Force C-130 aircraft carrying nearly 100 combat troops crashed during its landing in Patikul Sulu yesterday. At least 51 people were confirmed dead on the plane and on the ground. Authorities are still identifying the charred bodies recovered from the downed plane. Meanwhile, the military temporarily prohibits its remaining C-130 planes from pl flying. Leia Ilagan give us the details in this report. All 96 passengers on board the ill-fated C-130 military aircraft that crashed on Sunday killing at least 50 people have been accounted for. However, identifying the severely charred bodies of the victims remain a challenge to authorities. AFP spokesperson Major General Edgar Arevalo says they will use the dental records of the soldiers on board to identify them. Much as the remains are charred, uh, we have means on how to identify them. They all have dental records to, for us to compare them with, uh, with the remains. Forensic experts from other government agencies will also help identify the victim. In instances where there might be some changes and uh, some dental records were not updated, we have forensic experts in the armed forces and, and other agencies of government who are going to work together in order to ensure that proper identities will be known. Philippine National Police Chief Police General Guillermo Eliazar issued a directive to the police force in extending assistance to the AFP. The AFP also appealed to the public to avoid speculation and wait for the result of their investigation. Accidents like this that needed investigation may have to other aspects to look into. We look at facility, equipment, weather, uh, skills of the pilot. All this will have to be taken into consideration. Authorities have recovered the black bags of the plane that could shed more light to the cause of the plane crash, Revalo ensured that the pilot of the C-130H Hercules plane was skilled. He added that the plane was in good condition and had 11,000 hours flying time before its next scheduled maintenance. The flight's manifest shows 96 passengers, 47 of whom died and 49 survived. There were three pilots and five air crew. 17 of the injured military personnel were evacuated to Zamboanga City, while 32 of the remaining injured are being treated at different military hospital. Most of the passengers were fresh graduates from military training. And if there are any 
specific need for an upgraded or elevated or higher type of facility or treatment that they will be needing, we have available aircraft on standby to bring them to the uh, nearest hospital be in, in Manila uh, to, to ensure that they will be properly treated. Three civilians on the ground also died while four other civilians on the ground were wounded. The AFP has five C-130 planes in total, including the one that crashed. Another C-130, which is in flying condition, will be grounded. Two other are currently under maintenance in Portugal. The fifth plane, recently purchased, has yet to arrive. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President Rodrigo Duterte visits survivors of the C-130 plane crash in Western Mindanao Command in Zamboanga City. The chief executive is sad because of the incident and extends his condolences to the family of those killed in the C-130 plane crash in Sulu. The president assures government assistance to the families of those who died and injured in the plane crash. Meanwhile, the palace appealed to the public to wait for the result of the formal investigation before drawing any conclusions. The modernization of the armed forces of the Philippines will also proceed full speed despite the recent mishap. In other news, the Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology updates the situation of the Taal Volcano, saying that lava fountaining will likely happen soon. While the health department asked residents near the volcano to wear protective equipment, Asher Kadapan Jr. tells us why live. Uh, yes, uh, Asher, uh, good evening. Go ahead. Good evening, Will. The Philippine Institute of Volcanology and Seismology explains that triatal magmatic eruptions have been happening due to the presence of water in the main crater of the Taal volcano. But once the water completely vaporized, Strombolian eruption or relatively mad blast may happen with the volca volcano ejecting incandescent cinders and lava flows. Pwede rin naman po, kung sakali ng... Uh Nawala po yung tubig dyan sa crater ng Taal Volcano. Wala ng interaction ng magma and water. Ay eh, pwede pong uh, mag-transition ito sa weak to violent eruption of gas charged fluid magma. Na para pong may fireworks, magkakaroon po ng lava fountaining at magpuproduce ng lava flow uh, papunta sa baba. Science and Technology Undersecretary and FIVOX Director Renato Solidum explains that the water in the crater is responsible for the stream and gas column being seen in the past few days, including the one seen early today. Volcanic tremor, which lasted for 45 minutes, was also recorded by the, by the agency. Solidum explains that these are signs of continuous activities under the crater, which involves movement of magma and gas. The volcanic gas it spews every now now and then, however, may not affect one's health if it stays in the higher altitude but will only block the sun rays. But it causes sickness if higher concentration of sulfur dioxide will be blown and scattered in the low areas. Very common um, effects of uh, inhalation of sulfur dioxide may be irritation of the respiratory tract. So asthmatics, of course, especially should be very um, aware, much aware, and should take precautions against inhaling sulfur dioxide. Well, the Department of Health added that uh, sulfur dioxide gas may also irritate the eyes and skin if one is exposed to a high concentration of the volcanic gas. The authorities encourage affected residents to use protective equipment such as goggles and face masks to avoid health problems. Will? Yes, uh, thank you very much. Asher Kadapan Jr. reporting live from Agoncillo, Batangas. Meanwhile, the Department of Health allocates more vaccines to towns affected by the unrest of the Taal Volcano. The COVID-19 vaccine doses will be sent to temporary shelters in Batangas, where evacuees are currently staying. Aiko Miguel explains why. The Department of Health targets to finish tonight the inoculation of all residents evacuated near the Taal Volcano that belongs to the priority groups. 
Some healthcare workers from other areas were deployed in evacuation centers to hasten the vaccination process. Health education and counseling of residents are also being conducted to convince more to have their COVID-19 jab. With this measure, COVID-19 transmission will be prevented among the evacuees. Aside from the 3 million worth of medicines for skin, eyes, and for those who have respiratory problems, the DOH has also allocated additional COVID-19 vaccines for more than 3,000 evacuees in 95 evacuation centers. Naging direksyon na rin po yan at desisyon ng ating vaccine cluster together of course with our officials na talagang dadagdagan po natin yung mga allocations natin ng bakuna sa mga piling lugar na ito. Dahil gusto natin maprotektahan yung ating mga kababayan na nandun sa mga evacuation sites and also affected by this kind of uh, incidents. Pupuntahan din natin ang mga iba pa upotadong uh, lugar na kung saan dahil itong uh, evacuation centers at uh, tinitignan po natin sa patba sa mga nagabo uh, laban sa mga karagiwang karagwaman na nararanasan ng ating mga kababayan dito. The DOH Calabar Zone also ensures they will immediately test, separate, and isolate symptomatic suspect cases and close contacts to prevent transmission in evacuation centers. And the RRNC has provided more than enough test kits for the um, current evacuees. So lahat po ng um, permitted na mabakunahan, meaning those um, above 18 years old, um, will be vaccinated. Kaya ngayon, uh, ang ating laluwigan, yung ating mga ilang eva evacuation center, ating i-convert na sa health facilities, isolation units. So ngayon ay gagamitin muli. At uh, yung mga paaralan ay magagamit din natin as evacuation center. According to the DOH, Aside from the threat of volcanic eruptions, LGU should also prepare for a possible onslaught of typhoons amid the pandemic. Evacuation centers should be properly ventilated. There should also be enough water supply for hand washing and bathing of evacuees. Kailangan merong distance ang bawat pamilya sa bawat isa kung maaring gumamit ng mga eskwelahan na merong mga maraming kwarto na maari magkaroon ng isang pamilya per room kung sakasakaling posible lang po para mas safe tayo, 10 per family. No? So kung magagamit natin yon because these are also uh, engineering controls, barrier po yan para dyan. The DOH wants to word that the situation in evacuation centers will not be super spreader events, so transmission should be prevented especially with the threat of the more transmissible COVID-19 variants. Case trend in regions should also be monitored to avoid overwhelming of hospitals and shortage of medical frontliners to man and treat severe and critical COVID-19 patients. Aiko Miguel, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. is now off the hook after the Sandigan Bayan cleared him of graft charges relating to the Priority Development Assistance Fund or the pork barrel scam. Dante Amento will tell us why live. Dante? Yes, Diego, in the 196-page resolution released by the, by the Sandigan Bayan First Division today and penned by Associate Justice Geraldine Ekong, the court dismissed the 16 counts of graft cases against Senator Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. for allegedly insufficiency of evidence. Revilla was charged of multiple graft cases after allegedly diverting his Priority Development Assistance Fund, or PDAF, to some bogus non-government organizations of pork barrel queen Janet Lim Napoles. The legislator was already acquitted of blunder in 2018. The Sandigan granted Revilla's demurrer to evidence, which seeks to junk the cases for the prosecution's evidence is weak. Six others are also acquitted, namely Mario Rilampagos, Rosario Nunez, Lalaine Paule, Marilo Barre, Encarnita Cristina Monsod, and Chita Halandoni. Meanwhile, cases against Revilla's former aide, 
Richard Cambe were also dismissed following his death in April, but the Sandigan Bayan denied the demur to evidence of the police for allegedly rehashed arguments, just what she raised in her motion to suppress evidence and motion for reconsideration, which already resolved both by the court. Thus, her draft charges will continue. Meanwhile, the incumbent senator said that the court's decision only proves that the corruption allegations against him are baseless, adding he can now work in the Congress free of nuisance. And that's the latest live. Back to you, Diego. Thank you, Dante Amendo, reporting live. The task force against corruption says Senator Manny Pacquiao has options on what to do next after recently claimed that there are evidence of corruption in some government agencies. Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara says if Pacquiao has sufficient evidence, evidence on hand, he may already file anti-graft charges with the Office of the Ombudsman or Departments of Justice. However, if the senator feels that further investigation is needed, he may refer the allegations to the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission or to the task force. Guevara assures that the task force disregards the possible motives of the complainants and conducts thorough evaluation to assess whether there is enough factual basis to proceed with the probe. Meanwhile, Senator Richard Gordon, who chairs the Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, says he will not avoid his responsibility as the Senate panel's chairman. However, he finds it strange that the senator who made the accusations will not be present in the possible investigation. Pacquiao is now in Los Angeles, California to prepare for his boxing match against Errol Spence Jr. on August 21 in Las Vegas. For Gordon, Pacquiao cannot suddenly leave and ask someone else to do the fight after he accepted the challenge to expose the alleged corruption in the government. For Senate President Vicente Soto III, Pacquiao should provide documented evidence, adding that he can also attend the hearing virtually. For Senator Panfilo Lacson, there may be not sufficient basis to conduct a hearing without documents supporting the claims, such as sworn statements of witnesses. The senator advises Pacquiao to show some specifics in support of the serious and sensitive allegations. Pacquiao's camp has yet to confirm if the boxing champ turned senator will continue his filing of resolution for a Senate probe. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission is looking into the government agency Senator Manny Pacquiao tagged with alleged corruption. But according to PACC Chairperson Greco Belgica, the departments mentioned by the senator has been long under investigation. Ray Pelayo will tell us why. The Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission, or PACC, is waiting for the documents from Senator Manny Pacquiao's office so that the commission could look into the corruption claims of the senator. On Saturday, Senator Pacquiao claimed that there was corruption in the Department of Social Welfare and Development, or DSWD, the Department of Health, or DOH, and the Department of Energy, or DOE. But according to PACC Chairperson Greco Belgica, there was nothing new with Pacquiao's most recent revelation. Hindi na po kami nagulat dito. Ang gusto lang po namin malaman na tinaantay ay yung detalye ng mga dokumento. Belhika said that it is important to coordinate with Pacquiao regarding the documents to determine which issues are already investigated or not. Regarding the DSWD's Social Amelioration Program or SAP, the PACC said there are several cases to look into. He said the senator should specify the allegations he wants to investigate as well as provide enough evidence to prove these allegations. Pero as of the moment, wala pa ako kung bagong narinig. Yung mga SAP um, allegations po na narinig natin sa kanya ay matagal na po namin iniimbestigahan. Senator Manny Pacquiao had said he is willing to present to the PACC the supposed corruption on government agencies. Yes po, isasubmit po namin itong mga papilis na ito. Uh, kaya po, pinakita ko na ito kasi uh, I accept the challenge of the President na ibibigay kong mga patunay na mga, mga ebidensya at uh, ito po yun. Uh, panguna, lang po, pang, panguna pa lang po ito. At marami pa po kami mga papilis na isasubmit sa kanila. Uh, talagang, sinisi, talagang binubusisi po ng ating, mga, ng ating team na siguraduhin na legit at uh, uh, toto itong mga ebidensya na ito. The PACC will also file charges against agencies found of corruption. 
Ray Pilayo, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. A political strategist says Senator Manny Pacquiao is now in the critical position to prove his corruption allegations or else he will be politically dead. Nel Maribuhok will give us the details in this report live. Uh, yes, Nel, uh, good evening. Go ahead. Yes, Will, there are lots of questions regarding Senator Manny Pacquiao expose of corruptions in some government agencies. According to Armand Dinoku, a political strategist, this senator now is in gamble and needs to prove his allegations. This is a gamble sa kanya, sir. Pero kung matalo siya sa, matalo siya sa boxing, hindi pa siya nakaprovide ng enough proof, eh, he's really politically dead na talaga. Nokum explained that if a politician will lose in a fight in the world of politics, it may result to bad impression of the public and may affect the votes in the elections. That is why he said former Senator Bongbong Marcos does not surrender his electoral protest against Vice President Lenny Robredo because he wants to avoid tagging him as a loser. Filipinos generally don't like losers. Nagita nyo si, si Marcos... Hindi pa niya dinadrop yung kaso niya kay Lenny. It's not sir because of the of the legality of the issue. It's because of the perception of war. In addition, Nokum said there are questions of timing on the senator's allegations against the government that given the 2022 national elections is just months away. Sa sa bad timing na ito sir. A uh, very suspicious timing. Uh, hindi gaano siya kasi ang ang target lang talaga niya is vote conversion eh. Hindi naman ito nagwawala siya para to bring down para to, to to get kasi pareho sila DDS eh. Hindi hope na makakuha siya ng votes both from pairs from the DDS and also from the yellows. So, pero I don't see that happening right now. Hindi Despite this, the senator may benefit from the issue depending on the evidences that he will present to the public regarding his allegations of corruptions. I'm not writing money out of the equation pa rin. Pwede pa rin siya, pwede pa rin siya bumawi sa sitwasyon na ito. Pwede pa rin siya may spring a surprise sa atin lahat. Kung maganda yung mga expose niya, sir, and it will really expose the uh, ma may makukulong. Pero... Uh, for Senator Camp, he said there's enough time for now and not too late to prove his list of supposed corrupt government agencies. Will? Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Nel Maribohok, reporting live. Meanwhile, Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo refutes the allegations of corruption of former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV. According to the Senator, Trillanes' accusations are just rehashed and fabricated. Nel Maribohok is back to tell us why. Former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV accused President Rodrigo Duterte and Senator Christopher Lawrence Bongo of plunder over 6.6 .6 billion peso worth of road widening and concreting projects awarded to companies owned or managed by his father and half-brother. Trillanes in his YouTube account said the CLTG Builders, owned and managed by Desiderio Lim, Go's father, was awarded 125 road widening projects from March to May 2018. Kung matatandaan nyo, bago naging senador si Bongo noong 2019, siya ay ang special assistant ni Duterte simula pa noong 1998. Sa madaling salita, may paglabag sa batas ang mga ginawang pagkaka-award ng mga government contracts sa tatay at kapatid ni Bongo. At dahil bilyon-bilyon ang halaga ng mga kontratang ito, ano ang krimen nilang ginawa? Plunder. The former senator said this is questionable given the status of the said companies. Pareho din B-license lang ang hawak ng dalawang kumpanya, pero nakakuha sila ng malalaking proyekto. Bawal po ito. Senator Bongo took a swipe at Trillanes for crafting an invented story. Unang-una, walang bago sa akusasyon niya. Rehash issue, fabricated, 
o bloated na mga numero na ilang taong maling ipinagdudugtong para lumaki ang halaga to make it look as if may plunder o anomalya na nangyari when clearly these transactions went through public bidding and proper procurement procedures in accordance with our laws. According to Go, ever since he became a public servant, he barred his family from getting any favors from him. Nung nagtatrabaho pa ako sa City Hall, sinabihan ko ang aking uh, pamilya na huwag silang lumapit sa City Hall. Dahil pag lumapit sila, aalis ako sa aking uh, trabaho. Ang ibang tao ay nakakalapit sa akin para humihingi ng kahit anong tulong. Basta nasa tama, tutulong ko ako. Pero ang pamilya ko, hindi yan nakakahingi ng anong pabor mula sa akin. He also challenged the former senator to just file a case against those who he believes are corrupt. Trillanes, huwag ka na magpaligoy-ligoy pa. Kung tingin mo may korupsyon na nangyari, kasuhan mo na para mapanagot. May proseso at hukuman na makapagpapatunay ng mga yan. Huwag mo na daanin sa estilo mong bulok. The senator then turned the tables on Trillanes. Ngayon, ako naman ang may tanong kay Trillanes. Si Trillanes na Mr. Fake News at walang delikadesa. Pinagbawalan mo ba noon ang iyong nanay at tatay habang sundalo ka noong pumasok sila bilang supplier sa Navy? Nasaan? ang delikadesa mo doon. Nel Maribuhok, UATV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. Meanwhile, Malacanang brushed off Senator Manny Pacquiao's allegations of corruption against various government agencies. The palace also challenged former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV to file charges over his plunder claims against President Rodrigo Duterte and Senator Bongo. Rosalie Cos explained why. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque taunted the corruption allegations of Senator Manny Pacquiao against at least four government agencies. He called the lawmakers' revelations worthless. Akala ko atom bomb yung pala, Watu C. Wala po, walang kwenta. The senator has yet to submit his list and evidence against corrupt government agencies to the office of President Rodrigo Duterte. According to the palace, the senator preferred to face the media first before meeting the president. Apart from this, presidential spokesperson Roque also questioned the senator and told him to prove his allegations against the Department of Social Welfare and Development, Department of Energy, and Department of Environment and Natural Resources. Nasaan po ang prueba? Nasaan po ang mga dokumento? Nagtataka nga ako kung ano yung mga dokumento doon sa lamesa niya. No? Hindi ko alam kung meron talagang imprenta yun, no? mga papel lang yun for props. Pero sana po isubitin niya kung meron. Over the weekend, Senator Pacquiao insisted there was corruption in the distribution of the Social Amelioration Program or SAP and also revealed that the Department of Energy has awarded billions of pesos in contracts to a startup company allegedly without going through a bidding. The palace official then questioned the senator on how he will initiate the investigations if he has already left for the country. The boxer turned senator already flew to the United States for his boxing match on August 21. Meanwhile, presidential spokesperson Roque said former Senator Antonio Trillanes IV will not be able to prove his plunder allegations against the chief executive and Senator Bongo. Trillanes accused President Duterte and the lawmaker of corruption worth billions of pesos of public works contracts allegedly awarded to the construction firm of Senator's family. Ang ilan sa pinakamalaking kontrata ng Alfredo Builders ay nagkakahalagang 181.5 million, 140 million, 132.5 million, 108 million at 93 million pesos na lahat ay pang-concreting o road widening. Pag itotal ang mga projects na nakuha ng tatay at half-brother ni Bongo, ito ay aabot sa 6.6 billion pesos. Ito naman po kasi si dating Senator Trillanes, lumantugtugin na po yan. 
eh, binato na niya yan kay Presidente, kay Senator Bongo, hindi pa Senador si Senator Bongo, wala naman siya napatunayan nung siya ay nakaupo pa sa Senado. Roque challenged Trillanes to just file cases if he has enough evidence of his allegations. The palace official said more accusations against the president are expected, but the critics will not be able to prove anything. Rosa Licoz, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippine National Police says that the public will still have limited, limited access to the body cameras being used by policemen to achieve transparency in operations. Dante Amento tells us why. PNP Chief General Guillermo Eliazar clarifies that parameters will be set before any interested party can access the body cameras. The public may access the body cameras data if there will be allegations of lapses or abuses by the law enforcement agents. The High Court is drafting the rules for the use of body cameras. Hindi ibig sabihin may body camera. Uh, anybody or the media can just demand na pwede makita natin ano nangyari doon, no? There must be parameters. Ilyazar stresses they are not hiding something. In fact, the president himself and some other legislators have proposed to use these gadgets. The Supreme Court, on the other hand, disclosed the rules also provide for conditions which judges must require before granting applications for warrants which the law enforcers must comply. The High Court also assures to have balanced rules which will protect constitutional rights of the people while adequate leeway to perform duties and functions for the authorities. SE will also initiate an arrangement for the training of the agencies which will be among the implementers of the rules. Supreme Court Chief Justice Alexander Hismundo recently said that they may finalize the rules this month. Dante Amento, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And for the news abroad, a landslide has struck a resort town in Japan. 19 people have been rescued so far, but several remain missing. Let's get updates from this report from Maeve and Dog live. Yes, Maeve? Kath, an elderly couple were among those rescued from ruined homes on Sunday after a huge landslide struck Atami, a coastal city southwest of Tokyo. Two deaths have so far been confirmed. Yoshi Yuhara and her husband Eiji described the moment the deadly landslide hit when they heard a roaring like heavy machinery, forcing them to flee to the top of their three-story home just moments before the lower floors got flooded. They were rescued 26 hours after the mudslide hit. Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga told ministers at emergency meeting that there could be as many as 130 buildings and houses damaged as a result of the landslide. Here is what he said about the situation. Shizuoka Governor Hei Takawakatsu said two people were found in a state of cardio and respiratory arrest, an expression used in Japan before confirming death. Meanwhile, about 1,000 rescuers, including 140 military personnel, are still on the search for around 20 people that are still missing. Atami City has been issued the highest evacuation alert urging more than 20,000 households to secure safety immediately. Kath? Maeve, can you tell us what triggered this landslide? Yes, Kath. Central and eastern Japan has been experiencing torrential rains in the days leading up to the landslide, with the city of Atami receiving 313 millimeters of rainfall in the first three days of July. Kath, this is more than what the city usually sees in the whole month. The regional governor of Shizuoka said the heavy rain has caused the ground to loosen and the mudslide to occur, picking up speed and sweeping away buildings and homes along with fleeing people. The prime minister has also urged people living in areas hit hardest by the disaster to stay alert and take precautions. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Mavian Dog, reporting live from Kingaroy, Queensland, Australia. 
Hundreds of Afghan security forces flee across to Tajikistan as Islamic military forces of Taliban seize power in various Afghan districts. Marvi Dauphin will tell us why, live. Yes, Marvi? Kath, Taliban militants have rapidly advanced through the northern areas of Afghanistan to seize power. Now that Britain will soon seize its two-decade deployment of military support and the U.S. military withdrawing from the main Bagram Air Base. On Saturday, more than 300 members of the government's military forces have crossed the borders to Tajikistan to escape. Adakshan Provincial Council member Mohibul Rahman states that the Taliban outnumber the government troops, pushing key districts and capitals to surrender without a fight. Notably, Governor Hasti Muhammad of the Panjwai district in the southern province of Kandahar states the district fell just two days after the U.S. and NATO forces withdrew from the airbase, where a 20-year operation against Taliban and al-Qaeda allies were held. Kath, there are no announcements yet as to when the final batch of British troops will leave the country, but there are beliefs that the departure will be very quiet and low-key. UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson is expected to address Parliament this Tuesday to confirm plans surrounding future diplomatic and residual military forces in Afghanistan. Special forces arrived by helicopter on Sunday to attempt reclaiming some districts. However, the security forces managed to secure only a number of areas. The Taliban now control one-third of the 421 districts of Afghanistan. Kath? Marvi, do we know what the comments or expected actions from U.S. President Joe Biden is? Kath, at the moment, uh, President Biden has not given specifics as yet, but it has been announced by his press secretary, Jen Psaki, that the last uh, U.S. troops will probably be pulled out by the end of next month. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Marv Dilfin, for that live report from Perth, Australia. U.S. President Joe Biden delivered an optimistic tone regarding the United States' fight against COVID-19 as the country celebrates its independence. Kat Carriado will tell us why. U.S. President Joe Biden celebrated the July 4th Independence Day of the country in Washington, D.C., reminiscing the nation's progress against COVID-19. The president made his remarks in a White House party of around 1,000 people, including military families and frontline COVID-19 response workers. Today, we are closer than ever to declaring our independence from a deadly virus. That's not to say the battle against COVID-19 is over. We've got a lot more work to do. He added that the nation is closer than ever to declaring independence from the virus and highlighted signs of a return to normalcy, while also emphasizing that the virus has not been vanquished. The president also wasn't able to achieve his goal to have 70% of the U.S. adults get at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine by July 4th. According to the latest numbers by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, 67% of the adult population in the U.S. received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. In the end, the president greeted guests ahead of a fireworks display from both sides of the Lincoln Memorial Reflecting Pool. Kat Carriedo, UNTV News and Rescue, USA. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Kat Dumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. Valenzuela City has ranked first among Metro Manila cities with the highest number of COVID-19 vaccine utilization rate. Joan Nano reports why. Regular encouragement and constant communication with residents are among the strategies the Valenzuela City local government implemented to encourage their constituents to be vaccinated against COVID-19. A total of 222,666 doses of COVID-19 vaccines have been administered in this city. 
naging isa po yun sa mga factors na pinagawa po ni Mayor. Pinadadalan po ng letter for appointment mm-hmm. para sa mga vaccination sites po natin. Then, uh, yung sa Valenzuela City page po natin, active po yung ating CIO and DCU regarding sa pag-invite pa rin po. Tsaka eventually po yung iba yung Valtrys po na meron na sa Valenzuela. Ano rin yun, malaking tulong rin kasi accessible sa mga tao. Navota City was second on the list with 88.22% vaccine utilization rate. According to Navota City Mayor Toby Chanko, their walk-in policy has also helped a lot to make the COVID-19 vaccination program faster. Yung walk-in kasi, ang tatutulungan dito is yung talaga may hirap nating mga kababayan. Kung wala silang smartphone, wala silang internet connection, o hirap sila na mag-register online. 88,192 residents have been vaccinated in the city. The Department of Health commends the efforts of the local government units to inoculate their residents. Ang atin pong masasabi lang, pinahangaan natin ang mga local governments because bibigyan sila ng bakuna, agad-agad na uubos po nila dahil gustong-gusto na nilang makover at maprotektahan ang kanilang mga constituents. Meanwhile, several vaccination centers in Metro Manila have temporarily halted their operations amid the supply shortage. Dumadating lang tayo sa punto talaga na because the supplies are delayed, wala po tayong maibigay na karagdagan pa na bakuna sa ating mga local government. So dadating po ang ating mga supplies maybe on the second or the third week, second week of July, at dito po mare-replenish natin ang mga stock. Joan Nano, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Philippines' cumulative tally of COVID-19 cases climbed to 1,441,746 after the Department of Health or DOH reported 5,392 additional infections. In its latest bulletin, the DOH said the country's number of active cases has reached 51,594. Of these, 91.1% are mild, 3.8% are asymptomatic, 1.57% are moderate, 2.1% are severe, and 1.5% are in critical condition. Total recoveries rose to 1,364,960 after 6,477 more patients Recuperated, recuperated from the disease. The death toll went up to 25,192 with 43 new fatalities. The DOH noted in its report that 10 accredited testing laboratories failed to submit data on time. Meanwhile, the Department of Health or DOH reported two new cases of the COVID-19 Delta variant. The Philippines now has 19 cases of this virus type. The DOH also reported 132 new cases of the Alpha variant, 119 cases of the Beta variant, and three new cases of the Theta variant. The Theta variant is not identified as a variant of concern since more data is needed to conclude whether the variant will have significant public health implications. The DOH reminds the public and fully vaccinated individuals to continue following the prescribed minimum public health standards to ensure that transmission of COVID-19 is minimized. The Manila City government has given houses to more than 200 families through the Basta Community Housing Project. JP Duñez has the story. 229 house units were awarded to fire victims in Baseco Compound in Manila today. The housing project is called the Baseco Community with a two-story townhouse which includes two bedrooms, one living room, one kitchen, one laundry area, one toilet and bath area. Free housing. Hindi nga lang nila mabibenta. Pero, ha, hindi man nila mabenta kahit nakaapuapuhan nila. Ha? Magsasalin lahi na sila, kanila pa rin yan. Kaya nga, katwi, ano na sabi natin kanina? One, two eh. One, two sawa. Awardees of the condo-like housing units were grateful as for the first time in their life, they will be living on concrete houses. They have been also keeping temporary shelter at Amadome Covered Court for more than a year after the fire incident transpired 
February last year. Nagpasalamat po kami kasi ang iba kasi po nalipat sa iba pero kami po hindi kami pinalipat na niya. Tapos binigyan niya ako ng magandang perahan. Laking pasalamat ko po sa kanya na ang mga pamilya ko kasama maganda na po ang perahan po namin. Hindi na katulad sa dating yung tirahan namin. Masyado, masasabi ko, okay, kasi ngayon lang ako makatira ng ganitong bahay. Kasi squatter kami dati, alam mo ba sa squatter, mga ganyang bahay, mga tagbi, tagbi din naman. Galing sa mga scrap-scrap lang na, mga kahoy lang din. Yung bahay ko dati, ano talaga eh, kahoy. Minsan yung ano pa, yung bubong mga luna. Ngayon, ngayon lang ako makatira ng ganitong ano, bahay. According to the Manila government, resident will be paying 2,000 pesos per month which will be considered as their savings which they can withdraw if they will be leaving the house awarded to them. Meanwhile, Manila City LGU still plans to expand the area of the housing program this August. An additional 300 townhouse units will be built. There pa, may, may phase 2. May phase 2. Tapos, uh, siguro the day today, tomorrow, the day after tomorrow, yung natitirang unit, i-award na. So ito yung mga nakakompleto na kagad. Ngayon, titira naman tayo rito, nakikita mo yung nakapader, yun naman isusunod natin. Ano, phase 2. Phase 2. Para tuloy-tuloy lang yung development. Baka makagawa pa tayo ng mga 300. Base Community Housing Project is just one among the Binon Dominium and Ton Dominium Public Housing Project of the Manila government to provide homes to its informal settlers. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. And before we close, we will leave you with the final word, giving glory to God. From the book of Psalms, chapter 33, verse 4, it says, for the word of the Lord is right, and all His works are done in truth. And those are the reasons behind the news July 5, 2021. I am Herlene Delgado. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold, Evangelio Pastor the third. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God. <laughs>